morning children today in chemistry we are going to begin with a new chapter that is nitric acid so let us understand what is the molecular formula of nitric acid molecular formula of nitric acid is hno3 right let's understand the molecular weight of hno3 hydrogen is 1 Plus nitrogen is fourteen. Plus sixteen threes are sixteen threes are is forty eight. So total it becomes how much sixty three amu. Okay. How do we write down the structure? Structure of HNO three is written like this: H one bond with oxygen, another bond nitrogen, right? a double bond oxygen and arrow with oxygen this is the structure of hno3 this nitric acid it is also called as aqua aqua fortis okay another name of nitrogen a uh, nitric acid is aqua fortis what does this aqua fortis mean it means strong water why is it called as a strong water because of its corrosive action on many metals clear later glober he prepared this nitric acid by distilling uh, potassium nitrate with concentrated sulfuric acid and therefore the name nitric acid was given to it now let us understand about its occurrence what do we know about its occurrence it occurs both in the free state as well as in the combined state in combined state in combined state it is found in the minerals like that of uh, like uh, example i'll give you over here nano3 this is also called as chile salt petri okay and also in kno3 what is uh, the name of kno3 it is bengal salt petri so in the combined state it is found in these two forms in free state let us understand in free state how do we obtain uh, nitric acid in free state uh, during thunder and lightning right the nitrogen that is present in the atmosphere it reacts with the nitrogen the nitrogen which is present in the atmosphere reacts with the oxygen that is present there right and it forms nitric oxide this nitric oxide combines with more of oxygen and forms nitrogen dioxide clear this nitrogen dioxide further reacts with the water vapor that is present in the air and this forms hno3 that is nitric acid this nitric acid comes down uh, to the ground with the acid rain and then this nitric acid combines with the uh, salt that is present in the soils and helps in nitrogenous fixation forming a soluble nitrates like calcium nitrate and water plus co2 is given out is this clear to all of you this whole process where we obtain soluble nitrate is also called as fixation of atmospheric nitrogen clear till here everything is clear to all of you what did i explain you in the free state this nitrogen combines with oxygen forming nitric oxide nitric oxide combines with or more of oxygen forming nitrogen dioxide this combines with the water vapor that is present in the air and forms nitric acid this nitric acid comes down with the uh, in the rain as an acid rain and combines with the soil that is present and forms a soluble nitrate the whole process where soluble nitrate is formed which is used further by the um, these uh, plants uh, what you call um, which have nodules present in them right uh, for crop rotation they help in 
giving better yield of the crop right so th this process is termed as fixation of atmospheric nitrogen now further let us begin with the laboratory preparation of nitric acid we will begin with the laboratory preparation of nitric acid laboratory preparation of hno3 right now understand carefully what are the reactants required over here for the laboratory preparation of hno3 we require either nano3 or kno3 along with concentrated h2so4 over here right and all this is placed where it is placed in the glass retort fine so what are the reactants required over here nano3 kno or kno3 any of these plus concentrated sulfuric acid so let us observe the reaction suppose we use uh, child salt petri with concentrated h2so4 right the reaction takes place at less than 200 degrees celsius and what is it going to form it is going to form na h so4 plus h n o 3 vapors will be formed over here right so what is the complete procedure for this if you look at the figure over here the mixture of equal parts by weight of sodium nitrate or maybe if you are taking potassium nitrate is mixed with concentrated sulfuric acid and they are uh, gently heated where in the glass retort clear now look over here in the figure again this concentrated nitric acid vapors they condense they are collected in the receiver they are condensed and they are collected in the water cooler cooled receiver clear there should be some precautions that should be taken what precaution should be taken firstly we should use the glass apparatus what did i say use glass apparatus over here okay why do why should we use this glass apparatus there is a reason why we should use glass apparatus because hno3 vapors they are highly corrosive because because hno3 vapors are highly corrosive clear is this point clear to all of you next to identify to identify whether hno3 has been collected in the receiver what can we do to the receiver if we add copper turnings right some reddish brown fumes of nitrogen dioxide will be given out this gives us the test that hno3 is prepared in the uh, receiver is this laboratory preparation clear to all of you i repeat what are the reactants used nano3 or kno3 along with concentrated sulfuric acid what should be the temperature that should be maintained less than 200 degrees what are we going to obtain nahso4 that is by bis sodium bisulfate and your hno3 vapors how can we collect hno3 vapors they are collected in the receiver and cold water is poured over it right so these vapors they cool down and they can be collected what kind of apparatus should we use here glass apparatus should be used why because hno3 vapors are highly corrosive now some important points to be discussed in this matter regarding your laboratory preparation that is why did i use only concentrated h2so4 why didn't i use concentrated hcl right so for why did we use concentrated sulfuric acid is the reason why because concentrated sulfuric acid is a strong non volatile acid right what did i say concentrated h2so4 is a strong volatile acid clear and it is capable of displacing more of the volatile nitric acid right it can 
displace or it can form more of the volatile nitric acid. Therefore, we use concentrated sulfuric acid. I hope this point is very clear to all of you. Right. Then next point, why we do not use concentrated hydrochloric acid? Why we do not use concentrated hydrochloric acid? Because concentrated hydrochloric acid itself is a volatile acid. So how can a volatile acid form another volatile acid? Right? It will add as an impurity to your nitric acid. And therefore, we do not use concentrated hydrochloric acid. I hope this point is very clear to all of you. Okay. Another point I used. Why do we use glass apparatus only? So again, I have told you. Why? Because nitric acid vapors, they are highly corrosive and they immediately attack the rubber or the cork. So we do not use any rubber or cork over here. Complete glass apparatus is used over here. Fine. Next, let us talk about the temperature. In the previous chapter also, I had explained you about temperature somewhere. So let me go back over there. Let's talk about temperature. So if you see at uh, less than 200 degrees Celsius, we get a bisulfate and um, nitric acid vapors are easily obtained, right? But at temperature, at temperature above 200, above 200 degrees, what are we going to obtain? We are going to obtain Na2SO4 plus HNO3. But here I had told you some uh, drawbacks are there when the temperature increases to more than 200 degrees. What were those drawbacks? Do you remember? Damage of the glass apparatus, damage of glass apparatus, correct? Then what else? Uh, wastage of fuel was there. Wastage of fuel. What next? What next? Do you remember hard crust? Hard crust of Na2SO4 is formed. Okay. This is a poor conductor of heat and therefore it sticks to the, uh, to the apparatus and then the apparatus might break. The apparatus... apparatus might crack. Okay. Are all these points clear to all of you? Next week I am going to tell you that the nitric acid that we collect in the laboratory it is yellow in color. The pure nitric acid is colorless, white. But the nitric acid that is prepared in the laboratory this is yellow in color. Now what is the reason why is the nitric acid that is prepared in the laboratory yellow in color? There is a reason why because of because of dissolution dissolution of reddish brown gas NO2. Clear? I am using some key words that you should remember. Dissolution. If you do not use this word dissolution, you do not get marks. Clear? Now what does this word dissolution mean? That it is this reddish brown gas is mixed in the acid. Right? So we do not use this word mix over here. But we use a key word. Right? You are now in standard 10. So we need certain key words that is to be used over here. So what are we going to say? That uh, the nitric acid that is prepared in the laboratory is yellow in color because of dissolution of reddish brown gas NO2 in the acid. I hope this point is clear. That is why it is yellow in color. Now how can we get rid of this yellow color? How can we get rid of this yellow color? We, how can we get a colorless solution of HNO? 3. So, there are certain ways we can get the colorless HNO3. The first could be 
either bubbling of air can take place okay bubbling of air can also be one of the ways for removal of the yellow color second method could be like flushing of carbon dioxide through the acid the yellow color acid that is formed we, if we flush carbon dioxide through it the this yellow color it um, uh, it drives out this uh, co2 it will drive out the uh, reddish brown nitrogen dioxide gas clear it can also be uh, purified you may say by dilution with water if we add water sorry dilution of water so what will happen water is going to do what it causes dissolution of nitrogen dioxide again in the acid that is it is the nitrogen dioxide becomes more soluble in water and hence it makes the gas or oh, sorry this acid colorless okay so today we studied about laboratory preparation next time i'm going to come back to you with the uh, manufacture of nitric acid thank you